Good morning, Tent. Good afternoon. Good evening. My illustrious, beautiful family, welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house. With me, your host, Khadija. I got a few videos um, and things I got to get off my chest tonight. And I'm going to start. They're, they're all going to lead up to. Um, I'm going to make a video. Actually, I'm going to take one of these. Another content creator's advice. And that's Brother Phil from the Advice Show. I'm going to take his advice. And I'm going to do a video about the young lady that he had on his program named Bunny. Who is now being trying the media the mainstream media is now trying to uh gaslight and project just like the narcissist system does um and shift shape shift the responsibility off of amber geiger who killed botham joan um joan and they're trying to flip it to uh, a smear campaign, basically. Y'all know how. Y'all know the narcissist's, um, what is it? Motor of, um, operation. Okay? What do they call it? Um, apparenda. How they handle things. We already know. If you're a person that had to deal with narcissistic people, then once you really come to grips and have to admit it, because I know it's hard. It's extremely, especially because some of my white listeners really get it and, and, and it's good for them because there's hope. But there's just some, like there's a scripture that says, there's none so blind as those who refuse to see. There are some people who see, but they just can't comply. It's just like some people lie. They know they're lying. It transcends all the color. They're just liars. And they're pathological and in their destruction. I contend on this channel, and that's why we grow real slow. And I think, but we show. Because what I've learned and what I've actually diagnosed after all this time is that when we begin to get into therapy and they start talking about narcissism abuse and you start talking about what narcissism is and how it affects your behavior or just personality disorders in general, you begin to understand that you're living under a system that dominates you the way an individual narcissist in the, uh, dominates his family. So, in the human family, we have all different kind of people inside of the human family, right? But who has been made the scapegoat? Because all this stuff operates like a mobile, remember? The, the, the problem is the black people have been designated as the scapegoats, okay? You have all these institutions, like the court system that operate twofold. They have one system for black people, one system for white people. It's separate and unequal. Not by Khadija's words, but by the Kerner Commissioner, who decided this way back in 1968. Don't play like you don't know. So for those of y'all who can take the truth, just like when we're in recovery, we realize when we're in recovery, we realize that the things that we're responsible for, and then we realize how the damage has caused us to um, gaslight, smear, do all these things in our own personal lives. So when we see it operating on a larger scale, or when we see it operating as a system, then we get to realize that every one of us that are involved in this system have been damaged from narcissistic personality disorder abuse, whether you want to, whatever kind of disorder you want to call it. It's, 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 it's detrimental and it's not human. It's just not human at all. And so what is happening with the sister Bunny now, they are trying to smear her name. And because she had to take that one viral about Amber Geiger, now they're starting to question the person. They're 
they're trying to uh, smear her. They've started the smear campaign. And those of us who know about narcissism, we know what it looks like. We've been smeared. We've been gaslit. We've been in a situation where everybody around us have been told lies about us. And we just don't understand how we can repudiate these lies. We don't even know how we can get out because everybody believes it. And that's just how black people find themselves in this society. All the institutions serve as flying monkeys. All the institutions serve as an apparatus to help white supremacy dominate. Um, just the other day, um, somebody, I can't remember who it was, maybe it was Brother Phil, but it was some, some um, program that uh, they had actually the blueprint to white uh, to to narcissism. How you have to gaslight. How you have to no matter when you see somebody wrong, no matter what, no matter what they've done, no matter how wrong they are, you can never admit your 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 wrongness. That's what you're experiencing now with Donald Trump. No matter what he's done, he'll never apologize. So the the people that are not wrapped too tight, they see that as a sign of strength. Most people that know about mental illness, we see that as a sign of supreme weakness. In fact, it's a scary characteristic to have. It's an unstable characteristic to have because you can't even admit that you're wrong. You can't even admit that there's flaws in your behavior, flaws in your game, flaws the way you bring it. And so you can't be helped. And that's why, in my opinion, this is a, a system that can't be patched. You can't. It's just got to be torn down. And it's just got to be replaced with a system of justice. Because when you go back, white is, is so ingrained in the in, in individuals. That's why I say it has hurt white people just as bad as it's hurt black people. Um, and I don't want this to turn into that, but that's what society has made it. Black people are scapegoats. All the institutions serve as, um, you know, like I say, entities, factors of white supremacy to keep you in bondage. Okay? And if you look at it in your own family, if you don't want to get too far off, just look at it in your own family and see how the narcissism, narcissism plays out. See who's been deemed the, the, the scapegoat in your family. See who's the person that's actually constantly, constantly, constantly abusing the family members, but nobody says nothing. Nobody can't do anything. Nobody can't hold them accountable because they're ruling the family with a iron fist and they're beating everybody's behind and you're basically a prisoner. In a situation that you had no control over. Okay? So when you get to down to the you know the heart of the matter, it's really kind of pathetic. But what I wanted to share with you guys is very quick is um a little clip from uh, Robin D'Angelo. And I think that she explains the psychic. Of, of of these of people so well of white people and I would like for her to share that and this is called debunking the most common myths that white people tell each other or tell about race okay I hope you guys can hear this because I've tried to turn it up as loud as I can get it White in so many ways is to be raised, to be functionally illiterate on the topic of race. I am white, uh, and part of being white is that I was not raised to see myself in racial terms. I mean, I understood that somebody had race, but not really me. To be white is to see oneself outside of race, to see oneself as a unique, special individual, exempt from the forces of socialization. Thank you. 
I don't see color. I'll never forget a moment of standing beside a black man leading a workshop on race, and a white woman said to him, I don't see color. He said, well, then how are you going to see racism? Because I am black. I do think you know that, and I have a different experience than you do. And you're not going to be able to understand that, and you're not going to be able to support the parts of that experience that are really painful and problematic if you refuse to acknowledge my reality. I don't see color is really a way of saying I refuse to acknowledge the reality. Mm -hmm. You hear that? I refuse to acknowledge your reality. The part about that narrative is it reveals what the person thinks racism is. So if the person is using proximity, fondness across race as evidence of a lack of racism, in order for that to be good evidence, a racist must not be able to do that. So that rests on an understanding that a racist cannot tolerate proximity to people of color. And I'm hoping that we can see that's pretty absurd because trust me, even a valid racist can tolerate being around people of color and often are. Thank you. You cannot talk about any other issue without talking about how race informs that issue. What about class? And when someone says it's about class, that tends to function as a way to get race off the table. Absolutely. Absolutely. Focusing on race divides us. Uh, and focusing on race is, is not what did it. I would say not focusing on race, refusing to grapple with how race shapes virtually everything is what keeps us divided. And that is a very white narrative. All of those narratives function to get race off the table, close the exploration, exempt the person from any further engagement, and protect the racial hierarchy and the white position with it, which is an unequal hierarchy. The challenge I want to offer my fellow white people is changing the question from if to how. So dominant culture asks if I'm racist. And I want to change that question to how have I been shaped by the forces of racism? How is racism manifesting in my life? Because it circulates 24 7, 365. None of us can be and none of us were exempt from its forces. And this is where individualism can come in. I have a particular story, but that story didn't exempt me. And so I can ask myself, how did all the things I see as unique about me set me up into the overall racist structure? Because it did. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Can you handle it? I mean, how about it? Like what you hear? Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll be back with another video. Thanks, Robin. You explain to all the white people I know pretty well. Well, a, a majority. I won't say all. Majority. Cause a lot of them just fidget and start getting uncomfortable and tell me why you gotta bring up race so that i would just say majority and that's what thus the fragility all right i'll see you in the next video bye bye